Hey guys, thanks for stopping in again. Today we'll be working on an Audi All-Road. A lot of people think you can't put a hitch on these, but you definitely can. With the hitch on here, you can definitely put in a bike rack to carry your bikes with you, put an extra cargo carrier to ha have extra space, or even haul U-Haul trailer anywhere you can. Let's get into it. You will need the tool seen here to complete this installation. All right guys, so we're, in the, we're gonna be starting in the trunk here. There's uh, a couple different attachment points that we have to do for the vehicle itself. Two of them are gonna be in the trunk. They're gonna be located behind these panels here. One on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. We'll have to remove some of this paneling to get it out. Um, once we have it out, the bolts will drop down through the paneling, through the uh, frame rails, and then it'll come out on the back side where one of the attachment points will be on the hitch. So let's go ahead, we'll remove some of these uh, panels out of the way and then we'll get everything installed. Um, the tools that you'll need right away is gonna be a ratchet with a 16 millimeter uh, socket. And you're gonna need two Torx head bits. One's gonna be a Torx 25 and the other one's gonna be a Torx 30 bit. So let's get these panels out of the way so we can get the bolts out. So once you remain, remove the main panel, you'll see the spare tire area here. This plastic trim here will have to come out as well, along with this here. We'll have to remove these tie-down points. This will be where your Torx bits come in. This one's gonna be a T30 Torx bit. There'll be four in total that you'll have to remove. We'll just put these off to the side. This rear panel here will pull right up. Good, we'll slide that out of the way. And then there will be four Torx screws in these slots here. Two on the passenger side, two on the driver's side that you'll have to pull out to remove this plastic pin. The spare tire may be in the way, so you might have to pull us out to get to this last bolt here. Once those four are removed, all you have to just slide this forward and it'll come right out. All right, so these side panels here, they don't simply just lift straight out. You do have to pull the front edge out first. Once it is out, when you're pulling this forward, you'll want to kind of twist because it is under the lip here by the rear gate a little bit. So as you twist forward and pull it out, it'll slide forward. And the bolt that we're looking for is going to be this bolt right here that we'll have to remove. It'll be one on this side and one on the passenger side. So the bolt that we'll be taking off is going to be this one here. And like I said earlier, we'll be using a 16 millimeter wrench with the socket to pull it out. This is a fairly long bolt 
Um, once it is removed, you can return these to the owner of the vehicle. Um, they will not be reused. It comes with new hardware that will be put into the frame. the existing hardware out of the vehicle. We'll be taking the hardware from the kit. It's going to be the long bolt. You're going to put one flat washer on it and you'll be threading this into the body of the vehicle itself. It's going to be a 17 millimeter bolt uh, socket that you'll have to put in. All right, so the next step in our uh, hitch installation here is going to be uh, lowering the exhaust uh, to get the rest of our access points on our hitch available. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna be taking out these three screws here. They're gonna be a T25 Torx head um, to give us a little bit of flexibility on the actual bumper itself to allow us to get the hitch into place and to allow us access for our tools to go up. Once they're removed, you'll see that it does give us a little bit of play. All right, so the next step in our pitch installation process here is going to be lowering the exhaust. Um, and the reason why we have to lower the exhaust is so that uh, we have enough clearance for the hitch to pass over the exhaust to get to the attachment point. There's going to be four attachment points that you'll have to remove. One here, straight up, same on the other side. And there's going to be two more halfway up the vehicle right where the cross member is. One attachment point is here, there's going to be two screws, one there and one on the other side. And then right over here, there's going to be another attachment point that have two nuts that'll come out. One there, one over on this side. And then we will also have to be pulling out this cross member here. The four bolts that hold it in place. Two on the passenger side, two on the driver's side. Before lowering any exhaust, you'll want to put a strap in place just to help support the exhaust before you drop it down. So what we'll be doing is just putting it around the exhaust itself and attaching it to the frame above. Keep it kind of snug until we're ready for it to come back down and then we'll loosen it as we need. We'll be taking out the two back attachment points first. You'll be using a 13 millimeter wrench uh, socket on the wrench here. And all it is is a nut that holds it in place and we'll do the same on the passenger side. All right, once we have the 13 millimeter nut that's holding the exhaust hanger off, you'll have to rotate these, this exhaust hanger to the downward position so it doesn't get caught on the fascia when the exhaust comes down. So what you'll do is just lift it up a little bit and rotate them into the downward position. And then you'll do the same on the driver's side. All right, now we're ready to get underneath the vehicle to, to get the rest of the, attach, uh, the hangers down. We'll need a 16 millimeter, uh, or 17 I should say, to get the, uh, cross member down and then after we get the cross member down we'll be using a 13 again to remove the other hangers off of the exhaust.
Once you have the cross member removed, you can go ahead and start removing the four points that hold the exhaust up. Be using a 13 millimeter socket. All right, so on the driver's side here, our attachment points are gonna be here. That's the first hole. There's gonna be one here, where the bolt that we put in from the top down. And then the third one is hidden in the middle, behind this heat shield, which we'll have to put the hitch into place, use it as a template to put a hole into the heat shield so we can enlarge it to get our last attachment point. It'll be the identical on the passenger side. All right, for us here, we'll be using the U-Haul exclusive hitch jack. Um, if you don't have one of these, you'll definitely need a second pair of hands to help you get this hitch into position. And we'll go ahead and show you how that's done. So we got our center punch here, and we'll, we'll be using the hitch as a template for the middle hole. Heat shields are fairly thin, so all you have to just give it a little bit of pressure. And it should poke through. That'll give you your alignment on your middle hole. And you'll just have to enlarge the heat shield a little bit to allow the bolt to, to come back down when we do our drop down. And then you'll do the same on the driver's passenger side. Now that we have our access points all marked on the heat shield, we're going to have to lower the hitch and pull it out of the way so we can enlarge those holes uh, that we use the center punch to push through so that the bolt can drop down. All right, so to enlarge this hole, what we're going to use is we're just going to use a plain needle nose pliers. We're just going to push it up into place and just wiggle it around and it'll stretch that metal out um, until we get you know, about a half inch diameter uh, by using this. All right, now that we've worked it open a little bit, let's see if our hardware will fit through the hole. Looks like it's not big enough yet, so we'll have to open it up a little bit more. Like the plate is fits through and just make sure that the carriage bolt will fit in as well. And we'll do the same on the other side. Perfect. Now we're ready to put all of our hardware in place. All right, with our hardware here, we're gonna be using a fish wire to put it into place. You'll wanna do the back one first with the regular fish wire, and then the middle one as a reverse fish wire. And we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So you'll take your fish wire, and put it into the back hole, and feed it up to the middle one. Once you're out the axis, you'll put your plate on first. 
then you your carriage bolt on afterwards. So feed them up separately. Just pull on the wire until it drops down. And there's our fed wire. And then for the reverse fish wire, you'll want to put it on to the bolt first, through the plate. You'll feed the bolt in first, and then the plate in afterwards. Then you pull it back out the same hole. And that is how you reverse fish wire. And we'll be doing the same on the passenger side. Now we have our hardware in place. All right, now that our hardware is back in place, we'll be using our hitch jack again to slide the hitch into position. And then once in position, you'll want to take your fish wires that are still on your bolts and put it through the holes that it corresponds with, each on the passenger and driver side. Once you have your wires pulled through, you can go ahead and raise the hitch into position. All right guys, one important note before you start putting your hitch up into position, the three uh, Torx screws that we took out of the bumper fascia, we want to put that in beforehand. That way once we have the hitch into place, we won't have to worry about trying to get them to squeeze in. Once we have everything lined up, we'll be putting on our fasteners. The two larger ones in the back with the pull wires will be the lock nuts that have the teeth on the inside and then the one that we had put through the whole entire frame will have a conical tooth washer with the teeth facing the hitch with the nut on the back side to hold it in place. So we'll do the front one first since that one does not have any uh, pull wires or anything like that on it. You always got to remember the teeth side goes up towards the hitch. Then we can move on to the next one. And just be careful when you're taking these back off to not push the uh, carriage bolts and things like that back into the frame. And you'll repeat this process on the passenger side.
And then once these are in place, we can go ahead and torque them down the spec. Now that we have all of our fasteners in place, we want to torque them down the spec. The one to the rearmost part of the vehicle is going to be torqued down to 45 foot-pounds. The half-inch bolts in, front of the, in the front of that one there and the very front one will be torqued down to 110 foot-pounds. All right, so with just a regular long socket, I was finding out that I was not having enough turn radius to start turning this thing down to torque it. So what I did was um, I went and got an extension with a short 17 millimeter. And I'll be using a short 19 millimeter as well for the ones in the front. It'll give us a little bit more clearance so we're right underneath the bumper here so we can get a little bit more turn radius to get your torque into spec. Change this up to 110 for the half inch bolts. And then we'll do the back one. You'll do the same on the passenger side. All right, now that we have our hitch torqued on the spec, we can go ahead and start putting the hit exhaust back into place. We want to start at the forward most part of the vehicle and then work our way backwards. And then you'll have to rotate these back up into place. And same thing on the other side. And we'll use our 13 millimeter nuts that we had taken off previously to attach it back into place. And then we'll do the same to the passenger side. Now that we have everything back into place, we'll, we can go ahead and remove the exhaust strap that we were using to hold the exhaust up.
All right, now that we got the hitch and everything installed, let's go ahead and put everything back in the trunk. Now that we have everything back in place, let's go ahead and close this up. We'll go over some important measurements on the actual hitch itself. So down here we have your pin and clip hole. That is measures to the back fascia of the bumper, four and a half inches. That way if you have any vertical posts, such as bike rack and accessories, you'll, know, you'll need that distance. Second measurement is from the ground to the top of the receiver hitch itself. It measures 11 inches. That way you can decide on either a rise or a drop for the trailers that you're hauling. Um, Features about the hitch, it's a one and a quarter inch receiver tube opening. It's got tow loop hooks that are large enough where you can fit decent sized uh, chains in between. The cross tube itself is not hidden, but it is a round ergonomic design that matches the sleek look of an Audi. Thanks for coming in, thanks for watching. Join us again. To learn more about the product seen in this video or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.